Hey friends, my name is C and you're watching here Mr. Easy and welcome to a new video for A Level Further Math and today we'll look into the questions for 1.1 for imaginary and complex numbers and let's move on to question 1 but before you get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos and let's get started with the first question and these questions are from exercise 1a and 1b from the textbook so you can check it out yourself but anyways, here's one, uh, exercise 1a for question 4. Write in the form a plus bi where a and b are simplified sets of a and b. So let's split into half. So a on the left, it will be 4 minus 2i over root 2. So just like normal fractions, we can split into two fractions to be 4 over root 2 minus 2 over root 2i. So from now we can just uh, rationalize the denominator by multiplying bottom and top by root 2. So 4 root 2 would be 4 times, sorry, 4 over root 2 would be 4 root 2. Oops, 4 root 2 over root 2 times root 2 is 2, right? So it would be 2. And on the right, 2 over root 2 would be 2 root 2 over 2, i. And from here, we can see that we can actually just cancel out the 2 from both sides or basically just simplify it. And it'll be 1 and 2. So we're just left with 2 root 2. And just cancel out minus i root 2. And that's the answer. And b, we have 2 minus 6i plus, uh, sorry, over 1 plus root 3. So 2 minus 6i over 1 plus root 3. So we have to rationalize the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by 1 minus root 3. So the top will be 2, let's assume in. The top will be 2 minus 6i times by 1 minus root 3. And the bottom will be over 1 plus root 3, the original one, times by 1 minus root 3. So the top can be simplified into, uh, let's just do it together, use a for method. It will be 2 times 1 is 2. Let's just draw this. And two times minus uh, two times minus root three will be minus two root three. And minus six i times one will be minus six i. And minus six i times by minus root three will get us plus six root six i root three. Like so. And for the bottom, it will be one plus root three times by one minus root three. And that will give you a difference of two squares of e and it would be equal to minus two. So be minus two. So what we can do now is that we can basically just group the terms together. So it will be two plus um just group the non non-imaginary and imaginary. It'll be two minus two root three over two plus six root three minus six over two i. So what I did here was that I grouped these two terms because these are non-imaginary, they are real numbers. And plus the imaginary uh, part, which is 6 root 3 minus 6. Because these two terms contain i, and what I did was that I factorized i out of these two terms. So it'll, the i becomes here. And what's left within it is 6 root 3 minus 6. And over minus 2, so this should be minus 2, like so. So from now we can basically just further simplify it by just um, simplifying the fraction and I will just rub the top ones out here. So minus 2. So this will be equal to, on the left, it will be 2 minus 2 root 3 over minus 2. We can just cancel the minus 2 to get 1, 1 and minus 1. Therefore on the right it will be root 3 minus 1 plus on the right we have uh, root uh, minus 2, cancel to get 3, and this will be minus 3. Therefore, it will be 3 minus root 3 i, and that's the answer. And moving on, we have question 6, which is given that z1, which is one of the roots, is equal to a plus 9i, and z2 equals minus 3 plus bi, and z2 minus z1 equals 7 plus 2i, find a and b where a and b are real numbers. So basically, just try to find this term first, z2 minus z1. So z2 minus z1 will be equal to, z2 is minus 3 plus bi, minus 3 plus bi, minus z1, which is a plus 9i. And we can just simplify it to get minus 3 minus a, 
and plus b minus 9i. So basically this part is bi minus 9i, so bi minus 9i, and then just factorize the i shade away, so it would be b minus 9. So 9, oops, it would be 9i. So we know that this equals 7 plus 2i, right? So what we can do is, is that we can basically just um, equate some terms. It will be this will be equal to 7, right? Minus 3a equals 7. And b minus 9 will be equal to 2. Because we know that these two terms are equal. Therefore, it will be 7 equals... Oops, it will be... 7 equals minus 3 minus a. And b minus 9 equals 2. Therefore, we can simplify it to be a equals minus 3a, a, you can just bring it to the, the, the other side and it will be a equals minus 3 minus 7 which is minus 10 and b equals 2 plus 9 which is 11 like so in question 7 given that z1 equals 4 plus i and z2 equals 7 minus 3i find in the form m1 or a z1 minus z2 so i'll just split into three different parts like so so z1 minus z2 you know that z1 equals 4 plus i so let's put 4 plus i a bracket over it and z2 equals 7 minus 3i 7 minus 3i so we can just basically just simplify the terms so it'll be 4 minus 7 which is minus 3 and it'll be i minus minus 3i so it's very important that you that you put a bracket over this because if you would not, if you like, if you didn't put a bracket over it, you might write it as minus seven, uh, minus seven minus three i, but in reality it'll be minus seven plus three i because it's a minus minus. So it'll be i minus minus three i, which is basically i plus three i, which gets us four i. So it'll be minus three plus four i, like so. And number two, four z two. So let's put a 4 times by z2 is 7 minus 3i. So we'll just do some basic multiplication. 4 times 7 is 28. And 4 times 3 is 12. So it would be 28 minus 12i, like so. And number 3, it will be 2zi plus 5z2. So 2zi will be 2 times this, right? 2 times this. And I'll just write it here. 2 so 2zi is basically 2 times 4 plus 2 times i, which is 8 plus 2i. So I'll just leave it here to save some space. So it'll be 8 plus 2i plus 5z2 will be equal to 5 times 7 is 35. Minus 3i times 5 is minus 15i. So minus 15i. So basically from here we just simplify it. So it will be... Oops, it will be 8 plus 35 for the first for the for the uh, the real part which is 43 43 and 2 minus 15 uh 2 i 2 minus 15 i which is basically equal to minus 13 i so that's the answer so moving on we have question 5 which is from exercise 1b so the solutions to the quadratic equation z squared minus 8 z plus 21 equals 0 are z1 and z2 Find the roots given each in the form a plus i uh, root b. So we have to use the quadratic equation. So we know the equation, uh, sorry, the quadratic formula. So the equation is z squared minus 8z plus 21 equals 0. And this is the a term, which is 1, b, which is minus 8, and c which is 21, the coefficient. So we can use the quadratic formula z equals minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac equals 2a and minus b is basically minus minus 8 which is which is um 8 plus minus b squared minus 4ac b squared b is 8 so minus 8 so be minus 8 square minus 8 square minus 4ac a is 1 as mentioned and c is 21 so all over 2a which is just 2 right so now we can just simplify it to be 8 plus minus. So we'll just see what's in the bracket after you simplify it. So it'll be root, uh, 8 square, so minus 8 square minus 4 times 1 times 21, which gets us, let's just put in my calculator, 
4 times minus 4 times 1 times 21, which is minus 20 over 2. So now we can just basically just simplify the, the third first because we have to get rid of the, of, the, um, of the denominator, which is basically we have to simplify it. So the root of 20 can be split into two different terms. It can be split into minus 1, this term right here, and this right here. This third can be split into minus 1, sorry, minus, uh, sorry root minus 1 times by 2 root 5, right? And the way that we derive 2 root 5 is that we can combine these two 2 root 5 to become root 4 times root 5, which is basically root 20. So it's basically root 20 times root minus 1, but root 20 can be simplified into 2 root 5. So therefore, 8 plus minus root 20, root minus 20 will be equal to 8 plus minus 2i root 5 over 2. So from now, we can basically just simplify the 2 from the top and bottom by cancelling out the 2, 2, and this will be 4. Therefore, the final answer will be 4 plus minus i root 5, like so, and that's the final answer. And moving on to the last question, question 6, we have the equation z squared plus uh, bz plus 11 equals 0, where b is a real number and has distinct non-real complex roots. Find the range of possible values of b. So it's quite important that we look at this part right here. Has distinct non-real complex roots. That means it has imaginary or complex roots, right? Because it has non-real. Therefore, we know that if the, if the graph doesn't have real roots, so it will be either this, or like this, right? But since it's a, it's a positive, that means it will be a U-shape, like this. It will have no root. So we can use the, a part of the quadratic formula to find the root, uh, to find the range of possible values of B. And what we can use is that we can use the discriminant, which is B squared minus 4AC. If the discriminant is less than 0, that means it has no real root. If it's equal to 0, that means it has one real root, and it's, if it's greater than 0, it will have two real roots. But in this case, we're dealing with no real roots, right? So it'll be less than zero. So let's just carry it forward. B squared is just B. Because we have to find what B is. B squared minus four. What is four? What is uh, four times A, C? What is A? A is one. So it'll be four times one. What is C? C is S here. 11. So it'll be 11 equals zero. Oh, sorry, not equals zero. It'll be less than zero because it's a less than. It's a less than. So it'll be less than zero. So now we can basically just simplify this uh, this equation. So it will be b squared minus 44 is less than 0. So from now we can see that we have a quadratic inequality. And you might be tempted to just move the 44 over and just square root both sides to get b is less than the square root of 44, which is 2 root 11. But this is not the case because when we have a quadratic inequality, we have to draw a graph, right? And it's not the same graph as this. It's just like a graph for us to just know which region it is. So let me just draw a graph just for reference. And let's just draw like a normal U shape or like a normal quadratic graph. Which is like this, right? Ignoring that this is not the same as this. And this is just for reference for the region for this. So we can see that the, the, uh, the output or the, um, the range of this expression or this equation is less than zero. That means we define the region at which um, the output is less than zero, which is this region here, right? Because it's zero, because that's a zero line, and and it has to be less than zero and within the curve. So here's the other scenario where it's bigger than zero. If it were to be bigger than zero, that means we have to go to this region right here, because the output has to be bigger than zero and has to be beneath the curve. So it'll be this region right here to infinity. Right? But in this case, it's less than zero, so it's just concerned with the less than zero part. So we can now just factorize this equation. So it could be b minus 2 root 11, and b plus 2 root 11, because it's a difference of 2 squared, has to be less than zero, right? So if, if we were to solve just equal zero normally, b would be minus 2 root 11 and 2 root 11, right? So this would be as if it would be 2 root 11 and minus 2 root 11 over here, right? And when we have these, uh, this, uh, this drawn out, it's quite easy to see which region it is. 
So we have the two roots and the region is between the two roots. That means the possible values of b are between minus 211 and 211, right? Therefore, b is equal to minus 211 less than b less than 2 root 11 and that's the final answer and this is for this question's video for a level further match but today we look into 1.1 for imaginary and complex numbers for the questions and i hope you all find it useful and helpful and if you didn't please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos and if you have any feedbacks or comments or constantly feedbacks about my channel or my youtube or my instagram you can comment down below and i reply to them and check out my social media in the description, for example, LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check my website in the description or you can type it out on your browser at www.emaceyeasy.com. And I hope you all find it useful and helpful and I'll see you on the next video, which will be 1.2 for A level for the maths, which will be also about complex numbers, which is about multiplying complex numbers. But until then, stay safe and... Happy learning.